The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Well, we'll start off across the pond, taking a look at the uh, German DAX. By the way, the uh, the FTSE. If you're ever trading the FTSE, that's mainly uh, European stocks. There's very few London or UK stocks in there, so keep that in mind. But take a look at. Uh, you can see here we had a pretty nice run here with this three drive pattern. But look where we're looking at here on the daily chart for the DAX, folks. Uh, you can see we have the big A B C D pattern pattern up at the top at 12, 6, 12,000. We came all the way down to 11,250, and now we're heading up towards that uh, 12,100 level, which is the uh, ABCD structure, which would make this a Gartley, and that would also be a head and shoulders pattern, and it will also be a 135 pattern. So there's going to be a lot of things happening at 12,100 in the DAC, so uh, pay close attention to that. Uh, we do have a holiday coming up. It's not uh, it's not celebrated, of course, uh, any place other than here. So the markets will be closed on Monday. They will be trading Globex, of course. So it's going to be pretty active, I think. We have a new moon. This is a super moon today. So that is another thing that will make things a little jumpy. And we're certainly getting a lot of action as we go through here. Now, I wanted to bring uh, the uh, look at the FTSE on the 60-minute because we're really close to a uh, ABC. CD pattern here in the FTSE, you'll, you'll notice you'll see it a lot easier here when you when you look at that 60-minute chart. You can see the nice pattern. In fact, you can see the ABCDs on the downside that came in on um, Monday, and from then, of course, we've had a uh, pretty nice, uh, pretty nice little run here uh, into uh, this week, which is good. Remember, we had that big ABCD in the S&P down there. At uh, 2810, and now we're 130 handles higher, and we've taken out the highs of uh, the last weeks up here at this Fibonacci number. So we're going to see if any of these things, you know, make any difference. Now, there's one currency that we don't trade very often that looks very interesting here, folks. Let me get it up here so you take a look at it. This is going to be one. <coughs> one second, please. <clears throat> Hold on. All right. This is one. It's uh, just a minute. We'll get it up here. This is the old uh, New Zealand dollar. Okay. Um, you'll notice this is also known as the Kiwi, I believe. And you'll notice the really nice ABCD pattern. We have spot down here at 63. Folks, you're, look look at the 1618. I mean, this is a, this is a daily chart. You know, you stop, you can be 6280. You risk this for like 25 to 30 pips. Look how many days in a row you're down. Uh, and it, <laughs> it either stops right here or it has no friends at all. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a nice pattern. It's a perfect A, B, C, D. You made a perfect 61% retracement on the B, C swing, and you made a perfect uh, – you know, expansion of 1.618 on the uh, CD swing. That, that's that's mother god and country. You got a whole bunch of things, and it's all about risk control. You don't know whether it's going to work or not, but that's it. Now, I don't trade this. Uh, the pip spread on this is a little high. It's around, I think it's around six pips most places. Some places probably a little bit more, but uh, it's one that looks, uh, you know, very, very interesting. Now, let me talk to you just a tad here about the open interest. Let's get this uh get this gold chart up here from the last couple of days just to see where we are. You'll be able to, to see uh, what's going on here. Um, this is pretty much uh, uh, where we are today. Uh, we had a, a nice rally up here, uh, a nice ABCD correction here. The open interest in the gold and silver has been dropping all week, big drops yesterday again. And so uh, that's not a good sign. And we have that weekly gap on silver. I believe it's at 1760 because it you know, had a running gap up there. Uh, whether that's going to mean anything or not, I don't know. But open interest, I mean, that tells you whether there's players coming in 
into the market, and they're not. If you remember, we've been re reporting here for the last two or three weeks about the open interest that's been dropping in Treasury notes and Treasury bonds, and they've already started to move, you know, a little bit uh, lower, i.e., uh, higher interest rates, not lower interest rates. A uh, lot of things talking about the uh, negative interest rates and how important it is, and they had some millennials on uh, Bloomberg talking about it yesterday, and they thought it was a really good idea, negative interest rates. Well, we'll let history decide whether that's going to happen or not, but uh, if someone can find someone that'll do that, please send them to me because I have a special deal. I'm giving out a toaster that anybody opens a $10,000 account at negative interest rate. I think it's a pretty good deal for them. I mean, there's no guarantee that they're going to get their money back, but they will get the toaster. Folks, be realistic here. We, when these people start feeding you, you know, <laughs> when they start feeding you tripe and, it, and, it's, and they tell you it's filet mignon, you've got to know something's wrong. Negative interest rate has to be a Ponzi scheme. It has to be. You know, the, and I don't care. That, I, let's skip on to some of these charts. Boys and girls, we made a major bottom down there, slice for slice. On the major bottom, uh, on the major uh, bottom down there, hold on one second, and uh, we'll get this up here a little bit. We had a pretty good bottom form in the, uh, the stock market. Let's just get this up here. Let me move this over here. That was back on, uh, remember, this was Wednesday. Let's get Wednesdays up here. This is a 15-minute chart because that's what I look at when I'm doing these things. If you'll get up here, you'll see we have a uh, really nice, uh, uh, you can see the, uh, the uh, th that bottom there on, the, on Wednesday, that was a 50% retracement from the low we made at 28.10 on Sunday night when we gapped down 800 points. Uh, then we rallied up to 2,990 points. We pulled back halfway. There's 50, 28.50, right at 50%. And from then on, since Wednesday, Thursday, this is what's been going on. We've been making 382 retracements. Now, you don't see 382 very often, except when the market is really strongly trending. Well, let's just carry this forward. Those of you that don't uh, believe in Fibonacci numbers, and I'm sure there's some people out there that don't, let's just take a look at what happened all during that time. We'll just see what's happened over the last two days of trading, and you'll be able to see that each of the corrections that we had was 382. All of the major corrections were 382. There was four of them. And of course, now we're up here at 2944. We're taking out the highs that we made, you know, last uh, through of the seventh that came in at 2944. We hit 2946, I believe, last night. And it seems like we're still uh, moving higher. But uh, there's some there's some small divergences, of course, because the uh, New York composite is lagging behind. Now, it's going to catch up a little bit today because this is behind by just a little bit. But it's still not going to be anywhere near that 61% uh, retracement that we're seeing in the Dow Jones Industrial. Average, <clears throat> Dow Jones Industrial Average, and also in the uh, uh, one for the uh, 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 S&P and Dow Jones have both made the AB, ABCD patterns, uh, you know, relatively easily. You can actually see here the uh, the Dow E Mini here. Uh, we'll get this up here and take a quick look at it. You'll be able to see what the number is. It made it uh, sometime this morning. We'll take a quick look here. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. By the way, folks, we uh, should hear the sound of one hand clapping for Marshall in the room yesterday when he talked about the Gartley pattern in the uh, December silver at 1865. It broke 55 cents and uh, was a heck of a nice trade, Marshall. God bless you on that one. That was I know some of the people did it because they, they dropped me an email uh, and uh, looked at it. And platinum, of course, we were selling that up around the 938 uh, level. It broke 1000 bucks, And what we did, decide we lowered our stop to protect the profit and went back and made a new high today. The only reason I'm not selling it is because it's a Friday into a holiday, and who knows what's going to happen. We've got some really big astral things happening over the weekend, and of course, with this super full moon, new moon that we're having right now, there's going to be some incredible uh, volatility, uh, it looks like. Most probably, my guess is, and this is, this is my guess, and it's always worth less than two cents, is that they'll probably have something firm about the trade deal uh, over the weekend, and it's, it might already be built in the market or not, I don't know, but We'll see. The overall stock market, even though the Dow Jones and the S&P are pretty strong, and the Nasdaq's doing pretty good, too, but the overall New York Stock Exchange Index, which is the bulk of all the stocks, is not doing very well at all. It's hardly above the 382 retracement, whereas we're hitting the 61% retracements on all the other indices. Okay, now I wanted to cover something uh, just a little bit here, uh, and that's here with this. Uh, I want to get this German bund up because I want to spend just a second second here on the bonds and notes because the open interest is dropping in both bonds and notes. Yesterday, on the two-year, the five-year, and the 10-year, there were substantial drops in open interest, folks. That means players are leaving the market. So the only move, when the prices go up, it's short covering. It's not new buying. The same thing we're seeing in silver, the same thing we're seeing in gold. So those are very, very important things to look at. So 
these are things that, you know, longer term, they may or may not mean something, but these are the technical things that I look at and I have to report them to you. You know, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, but open interest is not a good thing. You you can't trade it on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's an alert to say, hey, you know, the game's changing here a little bit. So just keep in mind that that's a, a very, very important uh, important factor to, uh, to look at. That's, uh, uh, at least in my opinion, it certainly is. I think it would be really, uh, really important here. The other one that I wanted to bring to your attention is this one right here that is extremely important. I mean, super mucho gusto important, and this is the silver. This is where we were Sunday. When I uh, Saturday when I did the letter, and you'll notice here we were trading at 17.39 in the spot silver, and we gapped up to 17.60. We we jumped up 20 cents. We took out the previous two weeks high, and we left a weekly gap on silver. And silver rallied all the way up, you know, to 18.72, uh, uh, which was uh, then we backed off 50 cents, which just basically a normal correction. But the fact that we left a weekly gap on that is very very unusual. As a matter of fact, why don't you go back and look the last time you saw a weekly gap, and the only one you can find is if you go back into September of 2017, we left a weekly gap, and then the market filled the gap the next week, and it immediately dropped from 18 all the way down to 15. So this gap that we're looking at here is extremely important, because when we go below 1760, if we ever do, that's going to to uh, to really uh, to tell you that the silver is going to have a heck of a correction. So whether that happens in my life term or not, I'm not I'm not really sure. Getting back to the bonds and negative interest rates, folks. When I went to work for Drexel back in '76, there was a gentleman there from Wharton School of Business, Mike Milken, who had been there since '73, I believe, and he had presented to Br Br uh, Drexel Burnham the idea of uh, selling a high grade. I E junk bonds and changing the names from junk bonds, which they were always called, to high-yielding bonds. He got the nickname the Junk Bond King because here he was in Beverly Hills at a nice little boutique firm, and everybody thought, you know, it's not going to be very big, but all of a sudden, these things became very, very popular. And what happened was we had interest rates. If you remember, in the mid-'70s, the interest rates were going very, very high. They, they peaked in 1980, 81 or 82, at T-bill rates of 13%. Well, our T-bill rate now is 1.3. So there's been a slight correction in that. That's a 37-year bull market in negative or in lower interest rates. So he was at a time when people couldn't get financing, and that's why it was difficult. So the only way they could do it was to issue these high-yielding bonds. Well, once they were called high yield, well, then they could be put into portfolios and stuff like that. And he did his best to change it. And he, he had a lot of people that were detractors from him because he was making a great deal of money. If you want to read what happened during that time, the book to read is The Den of Thieves by James Stewart. He's on CNBC all the time. He's a, I think he's a reporter for the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal. I'm not sure which one, but he does some really great research and it's a, really a good book. The book, uh, when they, uh, uh, oh, what was the first book? Oh, shucks. Oh, hmm. Oh, the first book was The Predator's Ball. That was basically scripted for uh, Milken by a special reporter. So that's not really a good indication of what happened at Drexel. But the way they, uh, the way they, <laughs> pretty much, David, you're right, it's like liar's poker. But uh, the way they made their money at Drexel, when usually when you're a bond broker or a stock broker, and you've got to be listed, of course, at the SEC and, and the uh, – well, and NYSE and all that other stuff. But uh, when you when you sell a bond, you're selling, a, say, a $10,000 bond, you're going to probably make uh, maybe $100 on it, okay? With high-yield bonds, it was different because the, they had their own market. And he was, the, the Drexel Burnham was the market. They had all these guys, Lowell Milken and uh, Warren Trepp and all the other fellows that were there, uh, uh, Milken's brother, Lyle. And, uh, you know, these guys were a tremendous salesman. And someone that had a 
a bond to sell, a high-yielding bond, they would come to Drexel Burnham and say, look, I've got my high-yielding bonds to sell. And they, they their, their deal was, well, right now the market's a little tight. You know, I can probably get you. And they would give a figure. In other words, instead of making like a $100 commission on a $10,000 bond, they might make an eight or $900 commission. It was that big. I mean, the spreads were just huge. But at the same time, on the other side of the room, someone calls in wanting to put $10 million into high-yielding bonds because they've got a good yield and things are looking better for this company, but the market is really, really hot. And all of a sudden, that same bond that they sold at a big discount on the left side of the room was now selling at the right side of the room for a $100 premium. So you're talking about a 20% 20 haircut on a $10,000 bond. They made two grand instead of the usual $150 to $200. And that's where the uh, – you're right, David. That's why it's a license to steal. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's exactly that's, – and it would still be going on to this day if he had not gotten into uh, the uh, – the uh, insider trading with the Warren, uh, what's his name? Uh, Slot, uh, not Slotsky. What was his name? No, Scott's my friend. Uh, what was the guy's name? Uh, ah. Oh, I can't remember. Boy, to get the gray matter working again. Ben Stein. I know Ben Stein very well. He, I had his, I had his account. Great guy. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks. Uh, anyway, I think that was the end of the comment that I wanted to mention. Uh, I had a chance to work at uh, the Milken Group. Uh, my my one of the, the director that I worked for at Drexel Burnham came in one day and said that they had expressed an interest because I was always there early in the morning when they were there, <laughs> and. Uh, they assumed that was hard work, but I didn't have to work that hard. Uh, but I decided not to when they told me. He said, if you do it, he said, it's the dumbest thing you ever want to do. He says, because you don't want to work that hard with two little kids. And I was making some pretty good bread anyway, so it didn't make a lot of difference. Take a look here about the grain markets. Uh, uh, Marshall has just told us that he's long some uh, Christmas wheat. I actually like that. I'm waiting to buy some corn. We're trading down around uh, 370 one today. I'd like to see it get about 10 or 15 cents lower, but we're over this super new moon. So if you wanted to buy corn just on the lunar thing, it would probably be not a bad uh, not a bad idea. I think we're trading at uh, 369 this morning. I'm, I'm not doing that because I'm doing some other things in these financial markets, as you could imagine, seeing all these numbers and all the astrology stuff coming up. So that's not a bad idea. There is one really interesting one that, uh, that looks uh, really good, and that is the uh, Christmas soybean oil, if I can find it. And there it is. Let's get this up here because we went down yesterday and we hit that bottom of that line. Uh, oh, shut the front door. There we go. We got down to the uh, 26, uh, 20 level. Uh, 26.30, I think, was the low. We're now trading at 28.70 uh, and change. So the risk on that is pretty good. Now, this is a soybean oil. That is roughly 20% of the soybean crop. And remember, folks, this is the end of August. The, 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 the crops are pretty much done. The only thing that can screw around with them now is some uh, uh, wet weather at harvest or an early frost, and then there could be something. But uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's been, they've been hurt very badly by the uh, tariffs, as most people have been, and and now it looks like that the Chinese have. Uh, uh, yelled uncle, and so maybe that's going to be the thing that sends this market into the stratosphere. So we'll see whether that happens or not. Let's move on to one other thing that I wanted to mention uh, about the commodities, and, and that, of course, are these these hogs. They're they're really trying to get down here. Uh, we we've tested this level, uh, thanks to our little friend uh, Ruby here. We got down again, and we're now trading uh, pretty good, uh, quite a bit higher uh, this morning. Uh, so uh, that's a sign that maybe the, the the catharsis in the hog market could be over. If there's one thing we could always remember, folks, about this is that if you would if you would just remember to take the news when it comes out about being bullish or bearish, just like the news on politics, take it with a grain of salt. The good part about being a technician, folks, is you look at the chart, and it's telling you what they're doing. They can't hide from you. They can lie. They can cheat. They can give you misinformation, but they can't hide. Just like in the open interest. When the open interest is leaving the market, it's screaming to you, hey, the boy are leaving the restaurant. The food's changed. So we got to remember this is what's happening in silver and gold, and it's also happening in the, in the interest rate markets. Folks, you know, when you do this business for a long time, you got to use just a tiny bit of common sense. Does it make any sense in the world for you to give your money to somebody that's not guaranteed? Sure, it's guaranteed on the paper that's printed on. Yeah, well, big deal that is. To give them the money, and you have to pay them for holding the money? If I told my grandfather that, he would look at me and he'd tap me on the head with his little cane and say, Fate Fubo, and that's Italian for get wise. I mean, give me a break, man. That's, that's, that's just silly. That's common sense. Read the book, the autobiography by uh, 
Bernard Baruch, and he goes through some of those things that have happened. And he says in there, one of the greatest scams in all of Wall Street is to inflate something to a high price, and you can get suckers to buy it all the way down. And we've seen this all through history. Doesn't make any difference whether it's Global Crossing or WorldCom, Enron. Doesn't make any difference. Uh, <laughs> just look at some of the some of the great. Look at General Electric. What a great country company it used to be. Eastman Kodak. You know, directs you know, <laughs> Deutsche Bank, you're absolutely right. You know, they're they're all there. You know, I mean, you just gotta you gotta be very very careful. And that's about the end of that lecture for the day. Let's move on here to another one here. We've had some um, markets moving around, jumping around quite a bit. I wanted to bring the sugar up too because the sugar is coming right down to that bottom again. So Ruby, I want you to be really careful, dear, because anything below, uh, e you know, eleven dollars would not be good. And the reason for that, folks, is look at the bottom. You got a double bottom down here. You've had a triple bottom actually now, and there could be a triple bottom forming as we speak because we're down here at that eleven twenty again. But you see right below that, that eleven dollars where it says one point six one eight, that's the line in the sand folks. You remember the line in the sand with the Iranian thing? That is something you got to pay really close attention to when you're dealing in technical analysis, because when you're dealing with the Fibonacci spiral, starts at 382, 1, 1.27, 1.618. 1 That's when the spiral ends. So past 1.618 is a very, very, very troubling sign. So you got to pretend to yourself that this is what you've got to do. Now, we've got one other market that is really in a, a point of interest right now, and that, of course, is the euro. We've been waiting for the euro to get down to this magical level here. Again, you're going to be able to see the 1.618 level, but this is very important, and I'll bring this up with the U.S. dollar because this is how we started the week with the U.S. dollar uh, backing off, and now you can see we still have this potential here. We're trading at 10.30, 1.10.30. can and we're we're below we're matching those lows that we made uh, on uh, August 1st, and if this doesn't stop at a double bottom, which I don't think it will, but it could, and but if it stops. There, it'll it'll wash out all of those uh, all, all of those longs, and then at that one uh, one. 109.80 is where you'd probably want to be looking at it, but below 109.50, <laughs> that's sayonara. You know, sayonara, goodbye Japanese, Viocondias, goodbye in Spanish. You know, below 10.90 is goodbye Euro. So that's the way it looks like. When I was in uh, medical school, I did go to medical school for a few months before I decided I didn't want anything to do with those cadavers. The old professor said that they had a, a cadaver there that had a ruptured aortic aneurysm, which is the big vein right in the big artery right in the middle of your body. And uh, he would say, you know, that uh, sayonara is goodbye Japanese, biocondia is goodbye Spanish, hasta luego is goodbye in Mexican, but the busted corn, uh, busted aortic artery, artery is goodbye in any language. Professor Preston Buchanan Simon from the University of Indiana. Okay, let's move on here to uh, one other one that I wanted to talk about, and that is these commodities that we got to remind ourselves because we're still coming lower in coffee and sugar and some of these others. And uh, if you'll remember the CRB index that we looked at, it's trying to make a bottom down in here. This is going to decide the whole game. I really believe this bottom is going to hold because if this bottom doesn't hold, we're going to be looking at deflation, and deflation is not good, boys and girls. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. 
A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First mortgage program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First mortgage program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, since we were talking about the euro, let's switch our game plan over to the uh, U.S. dollar. If you'll remember, we talked about the big drop that we had. If you remember on Friday, of the uh, that's when the euro was rallying up to 111.85, and we stopped right at that trend line, which was a 78% retracement of the low from August the uh, 12th. And look at it, where we are now. We've already popped up above that again, and it looks like we're going higher, folks. This is set up to close up here around this 99. Um, 99 and change level. I don't know where it's trading right now, but the importance of this 9,800 level in the long-term chart of the U.S. dollar index, and this is your homework for the weekend. I'll be doing that for the newsletter, but uh, you really want to watch that because that is a monster 61% uh, retracement that's held for a long, long time in the U.S. dollar there at 98 and change, and it looks like we're getting ready to close above it today. I don't know if it's still where it's trading right now, but it's most probably getting ready to do that. So above that 99.20 level, you could easily see, uh, you know, this thing go, you know, totally wacko because it uh, certainly could do it without any trouble at all. It's a uh, remember it was about what seven or eight years ago when a guy came with 9842. Thank you very much, Marshall. But it was a few years ago. Think about uh, about what was it, 2012 or something like that when Mr. O'Brien came out and coined King Dollar, and the dollar was at around 72 at that time, and you can see where it is right now, uh, 98. So it's had one heck of a run. It looks like it go could go uh, even higher. Uh, some of these. Uh, markets that we're looking at. I already showed you the New Zealand dollar. Hey, that's not a recommendation, folks, by any stretch of the imagination. That's just showing you a pattern. I have never traded the New Zealand dollar. I know the pip spreads around six, but I don't really, uh, I don't, I don't really uh, pay too much attention to uh, to that. The other one that looks really interesting, of course, here uh, is the platinum. I want to bring this up because uh, someone's asked a question about it. Because what we did is that we had a uh, 
really nice run in platinum. We sold it right near the high yesterday. It broke a little over a uh, thousand bucks, which was about twice our profit objective. And uh, then it went back and it's made a slightly higher high today, up about two dollars more than it was yesterday. The gold has not done anything. The gold, I'll move to the gold right away because I know we're getting ready to end the show already so hold on we'll take a look at the gold here folks i really have a strong opinion here on gold with the, with this drop in open interest all during this time here and this is a re, re, that retracement level there on the 29th that was a 78 percent retracement you can see that on the far left that was really spot on you had a three drive pattern the old high had been 1565 we all we went all the way down to uh, 1528 uh, and so i I think that what we're going to be looking at here is a rally back today, which well, you've seen this right now. This is what we're looking at for today. We did a special video on that one and also silver last night. And uh, both of those said this was most probably heading a little bit lower. I think we're trading around 1534 right now. But there's a strong probability that this top that we've made here in the gold market could easily be something that would be uh, would last a, a very long time. Now, I I want to I just prepared this during the last break so you take a look at it. Here is the weekly silver chart that we talked about just a little while ago. I want you to see that bar that is current. You notice that it left a gap there at 1760. Folks, you don't see weekly gaps in these things very often, but uh, when you do, well, some of these you'll see gaps on them because of the uh, this is December silver. It's not it's not the rollover month. You, know, you see, this is SIZ19. That means December silver going back several years. And you can see it was very thinly traded at certain times. But that gap is at 1760 in the September silver. So uh, we're rolling over to December now. So watch that. But the open interest has been dropping in substantially, not just couple thousand contracts here and there they've, they've hit it pretty hard on a couple of these days that's that's the longs uh, are, are exiting the shorts are exiting the market that's uh you know and longs too but people are they're leaving the market and it leaves it vulnerable because we don't have new new players coming in you know so the restaurants run out of food in both the notes and bonds and also in the uh gold and silver and platinum and copper but uh, you know this, you can't trade off of them. You got to trade off the bar charts. Those are the ones that make the uh, make the interesting thing to uh, pay close attention to. At least, uh, let's take a quick look here at this British pound because it has held up relatively well here. We're coming down here. We're testing uh, the. Uh, 121, 122 and change uh, level one more time. It looks like it's going to hold that level. We have some, you know, news coming out of uh, whatever that political stuff is that they're. I don't understand it, but uh, they're going to try to do Brexit or not. But you, can you imagine this? They did this in June of 2017, and and nothing's happened. Here we are, two and a half years later, and nothing's going on. That's just uh, just absolutely insane to me. That was our best trade of the year back that day. That was when the, the pound hit 150. That was a 61% retracement on the weekly chart with an ABCD on the daily. And we went right into that Brexit that, uh, you know, we had to take the risk, but we thought it have a 100 pip risk and boy it was a it was a really a big one so we'll see the one that i regret the most folks and i know you shouldn't think about trades that you miss but to buy that gold right on the bottom like we did and only make 75 bucks i should they should take uh, all six of my licenses away from me for that one but uh, sometimes you win sometimes you lose anyway we'll move on to a few other things here that i think are relatively important the main thing really is that u.s dollar today the euro is going to i believe the euro is going to hold the one the 110 or just a little bit below that and then reverse but if it starts to accelerate below that uh, 110 level down in the 10950s there's a major major thing happening and that's the breakout of that long-term weekly cycle in the U.S. dollar. That's a big one. You want to pay uh, extremely close attention to that. I wanted to show you here. This is the uh, this is the uh, composite of New York's uh, 
NASDAQ composite, the big one. And this is where we were last night. As you'll see today, we'll be back up against that uh, line, uh, that downsloping line today. And uh, But the other markets are already touched the 61% retracement. We did it again in the S&P, the old high uh, on the 20, on the, on the 6th, on the 13th uh, was uh, 29.42. 2944. We got to 2946. And we did the same thing in the Dow Jones. We did not do it in the NASDAQ. Russell, extremely weak. It doesn't look uh, like it wants to go uh, very far at all. And many of the other indices that we watch, of course, have certainly not been rallying very much. But the news comes out, takes a little tweet here, a little tweet there, and the markets can go a lot higher or a lot lower. So you've got to be very, very careful as you go through some of these uh, markets that we're looking at. I still believe, well, let's not get into that. We covered the gold. We covered that. Oh, here's, here's the other one here on the gold. I wanted to show you that this was the one in the gold that was happening uh, on the 29th when it made that big run there. You'll be able to see it. This was one of the videos that we sent out that before it happened, of course, because it doesn't do any good if you send out after it happened. But you can see the three drive pattern that occurred at the 78% level. It's got a really nice A, B, C, D, uh, beautiful expansion. The high to high is perfect. Mother God and country. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average along with the Bradley model. Uh, this is where we were uh, last Friday. You'll notice that we've rallied uh, 500 points just recently up until today. We got to 26,560, I believe. Uh, that took out the highs of uh, the uh, the 8th of uh, 11th of uh, August. That was the 38-day high to high that we looked at from 1987. That didn't even come close in the New York Stock Exchange Index. But um, these are stocks that, of course, you got high cap stocks and they'll make this thing move. But this still isn't, I still think this is still in vogue. I believe that what we've had over the past, uh, since the 5th of August, has been a pretty significant bottom that had formed. And uh, now we had to rally up, and I now believe we're heading down. And there's still a possibility that that B leg, if that is a B leg on August the 5th, is, is valid. That means that sometime in late September, early October, we could be looking at a market that could be setting down a great deal uh, lower than where we are today. Now, that's just my two cents worth. It's technical analysis. A little bit of the Bradley model, which is, of course, all about astrology. doesn't work a lot of the time, but when it does work, it works pretty good. It seems to be fitting okay. Uh, the next major dates are not until late September, early October, so we'll find out whether it's going to work or not. Any close above 29.55 in the S&P would certainly tell us that we're going to go a whole lot higher. And once again, I will be having some fresh crow with a little bit, lots of garlic. So those are just a few of the things that we want to be looking at. So have a wonderful weekend. I'm giving everybody the day off on Monday. It's Labor Day, so don't work. And uh, live every day in an attitude of gratitude. And may God bless. And we'll see you on the flip-flop. <laughs>